Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to dive into how a trivia-based game could use arrays and how we can populate a question for options onto our screen while using arrays. So if you can download the file in the description below, you can get access to the starter file that we will be using. And all you have to do is load this up into Construct and you will have all these lovely text items created. We have 10 questions here because eventually we're gonna click on each one and have it show that particular question. We have a questions uh, section for the trivia and all your options. So once you have that, if you look in the event sheet, there is nothing on there because we're going to connect everything together. So let's get started with that. So first things first, we need to make sure we double click and insert the touch input because we'll need access to that because everything is clickable and so forth. And the next piece is we need to insert all our questions into an array to then give this piece life here. Now, the important thing about this whole process is we need to make sure that we do this as efficiently as possible with the constraints of what a free version allows you to do, okay? Uh, there is an array editor that makes everything so much easier if you get a free, uh, paid version, but I'm gonna show you how I came across a solution for this piece. So first things first, when we actually went through the previous array lectures and so forth, uh, videos, and uh, we created a single dimensional array, and you can actually export that array out of uh, Construct to understand what the structure is in order for it to get re-imported in to Construct. So what I did was I did that for you, and then there's two options. There's a 10 question option, there's a 20 question option. So uh, I opened it up in VS Code, and they are a .json file. So uh, what that means is it is uh, formatted in a way where uh, it uses a JavaScript object, okay? So here's an example of the 10, here's the 20. Now, a couple of things that need to be on here. Right here, you have it defined as a C2 array, the size, and then information here, and the actual data, okay? It has to be done in this format for Construct to pick it up the way it, you want it to pick it up, okay? So what we're going to do is, I'm gonna just copy this and have it ready, okay? So we're gonna copy it, and now I'm gonna jump back into Construct and in here i'm going to add my uh, i'm going to dump all this into a global variable for the time being so i'm going to just right click add a global variable and we're going to just call this trivia questions okay and it's going to be a string and then i'm just going to paste all this in there okay it's going to look crazy long at the top but that's okay that's all we need it to do we now have 10 questions in a format that we can pull from, okay? Now, it, well, it, right now it's still set to just this global string variable, but we're gonna pull it into the array now. So let's go back to layout one. We're gonna double click. We need to add an array. And I've already used the global variable trivia question, so I should probably come up with something different uh, for us to pull from. So uh, I'm just gonna call this questions array and hit insert so we can go into the event sheet itself and start this up so we want to do this by starting on start of layout because we want to initialize all this fun stuff okay and now what we're going to do is add the action and we're going to go to questions array and before we kind of just set it up and gave it value immediately right down here you see json and a load you're going to hit next and we're just going to give it the variable name called trivia questions. Make sure it's not the text, it's the one with the globe. And then you hit done. So now, if you've done this, what we can do is take a look to see if this was done correctly by doing the debug layout. So now we have this. 
I am going to go to my questions array and voila, everything is loaded into our array. This is a two dimensional based array because we have it going across and saving tons of values at the zero of X and consider this the Y value. That's where this height comes in, okay? So we have question one, two, three, four, all the way down to 10. And that's what we really want to make sure this loads in this way, okay? So once you've confirmed that, now we could create the ability to connect everything and get it going. So we're just gonna go ahead and get that started. So I'm gonna add click events to everything and then have it where when you click on one of these, it will load here, all right? So first thing, question one through 10, we need to add click events to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with Q1 text. Well, actually, touch, untouched object, Q1 text, done. And I'm just gonna go through this for each one and get that done pretty quickly here. And know that there are other ways to make this work that will save you lines of code and things like that. Uh, this is just an example to show you how you could get this going you know, for your potential trivia game, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Let's see, what am I on? I'm on four. All right. I should just stuck with five at this point, but it's okay, we'll keep going. Let's see. Now five, and then I'm gonna go to six. And we're gonna go to seven. And then we're gonna go to eight. And we're gonna go to nine and then we're going to add 10. All right, boom, there we go. All right, so now anytime we click on any one of these, it's going to then populate that one text, okay? So well, let's go ahead and start with question one. So we're going to make it where we are using, let's see, where is this? Uh, I believe it's trivia question. And we're gonna, that's where the question is. We're gonna set the text and we're gonna pull this from trivia questions dot, and then same thing as before at, except now we know this is the first question. So we wanna do zero comma, and then we wanna pick the next piece. So the next piece being um, where in the value in the Y section we want it. So it starts over at zero. So we want to do zero, zero, and then, oh, it's not an object name. Let's take a look. Did I accidentally click the wrong one? Trivia. Oh, whoops, that's the string. I need to pull, what's the name of our array? Questions array. Questions array, there we go. It's probably good to do the right thing. There we go, we do this. And now what we're doing is setting that there. Now let's do a quick test, hit play. If I click here, hey, change to question one. That means we have connected this properly, okay? So this takes a this does take a little bit of time, but it's well worth it once you get used to how this works. So now we do the same thing again, question array at and zero comma one. And then we do it for two, set text. And then we're going to do question array dot at zero comma two. And then we're going to go through here and we're going to do question array, whoops, back here, answer three, set text, question array dot at and zero comma three. Now we're going to do the last one, set the text, questions array at 
zero comma four. There we go. And now we have this. Now, just to kind of let you know, I'm gonna pull over my uh, my code, my VS code that I have installed that I'm looking at my JSON, use a text editor, any other coding IDE that you prefer. Uh, we made this where the first field is the question, we have four answers, and then there's a fifth one that is what the answer is to that question. So this is a string value. So eventually we will match the strings up based on what's clicked to tell you if it's correct or not. And that's in another video, but note that that is the other field we will be pulling. Right now, we do not need it. So this is what we're gonna do. Now to speed this up, I'm just gonna do a copy paste, drag that over down here and just jump into here. And now that we move this, we just gotta change this to one and then we are now to the next question. And the X value is the one that changes when we do this, because we want to go down one in our array in order for us to pull from the second set of questions we have. So just to verify, I can now question two pops up, question one pops up, and it is pulling everything that we need. So we're just going to Keep doing this, copy pasting until we get done with all the questions. Um, this uh, the reason why I'm showing you it this way is uh, repetition's good. It gets you used to understanding what you need to do and how we need to pull it in here. But we will eventually go over functions, which can make this so much easier. Okay. Uh, however, this is a good thing just to make sure you guys get practice with, that way you know what to do and when to do it if you ever get stuck. All right, so let's go ahead and put that there. And now we just keep going and going. There we go. All right, three, three. Three. Oh, there we go. All right. Four. 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 Oops. All right, we're moving along. Let's do this. Okay, so then uh, while we're playing with this and making sure we are connecting everything, just uh, the next piece, what we would have to do is uh, generate the click event of the item itself uh, based on the option. So like answer one text, answer two text, answer three text, answer four text. Those things will also need touch events set up because you want to check to see if that is the correct answer, okay? So we're just gonna do this. And just remember that the reason why we created all these buttons on the left side was just to be able to pull a specific question, all right? Uh, usually trivia games and so forth don't have that on the side. So this is considered this, just making sure you get everything loaded the way you want it to. All right, because that, that's very important. You don't want to get lost in how you're setting things up uh, when it comes to this. Because once you kind of get the flow of this, the rest of this will go by pretty fast in terms of getting it built. All right, getting closer. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, will I run out of uh, events on this free version? Um, you, you shouldn't, because a lot of the stuff uh, I'm doing is extra, and we still have 39 events left. So you can go ahead and make it where 
you, you probably end up using half the events at most to get this game built if you're doing like a trivia based game. Um, a lot of it has to just do with how in depth your questions are and if there's more than one set of questions and all that kind of stuff because it may take a couple extra lines of logic based on that. Okay. So now that we have this, I'm almost done and we can test this out. Hopefully everything went well and I remember this stuff correctly. So now we have all of this set. So now we're going to hit play and let's take a look. Question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now that you have all that connected, it's going to change here. So what you want to do is in this JSON file, you want to swap out your question with the answers and then copy the answer as is into this last section. And you do that for your 10 question or let's say you're doing 20 questions and both files will be available for you to download, to tweak with. So then you can make it so much easier to pull it in the way that it needs to be recognized in order for it to fill in accordingly. All right, so just remember that once you have this load from JSON stream, every, do a quick debug, and that way you can verify it's being loaded right, and then begin doing the rest of your stuff, and you're going to be able to set it up just like this and have everything clickable to show your questions.